Hello dog breeders, this is part two, how to read a dog pedigree, understanding genetics and percentages. Now before I start, I want to dedicate the writing of this book to one person because this system was just in my head. So to teach the only person in the world, taught by me, my system, I had to put it to paper with my eighth grade education. So thank you. <clears throat> now I also want to thank Marco Suarez for breeding Rhino, and also thank David Vang for breeding the whole top side of Buffalo's pedigree. Also thank my friend for getting me Buffalo. All right, I'll explain the percentages now. Okay, in this pedigree, the parents, 50%. But little Buffalo, he is 75% because he's in this row and also this row. So 25 and 50, he is 75%. Now your grandparents are 25%. But in this row, Munster is 37.5 because he is in here twice also. Once in the 25 and once in the 12.5. So he is 37.5. Now Myla, she is in this pedigree three times. One, two, and three. So twice in the 25 and once in the 12.5. So she is 62.5%. Now in this row, your great, great grandparents are 12.5%. In this row, these were my first two dogs, Buffalo and Rhina are 50% because they are in this pedigree five times. Once, twice, three, four, and five. So they are both 50%. Now in this row, it is your great, great grandparents. They are 6.25%. But Bonsai and Little Piggy, and also Typhon and Everest, are in this row three times. One, two, and three. So they are both 18.75%. And also, the two dogs I started with, Buffalo and Rhina, are in this row at 50%. Okay, let me see now. Let's talk about genetics now. And what I want to do is just show you a picture of me with my first dog in 1983. His name was Wacko. And this is my son with Buffalo, the first dog I started with. Now let's start with the outside genetics. One, color. Example, hair, eyes, and toenails. Two, structure. Example, head shape, body, and bone. Three, temperament. Example, the mindset of your dog, how they act. Now let's go to the inside and outside genetics. One, Health problems, example, all inside issues, outside, seizures, but seizures are inside and outside issue. Two, dominant gene, example, something that comes out in every litter, inside, heart murmur, outside, overshot. Three, recessive gene, example, something that skips generations, inside, diabetes, outside, clean body. Okay, now I'm going to explain the genetics on this board. <clears throat> uh, now bear with me now because uh, I'm reading most of this. So uh, if I lose track, just bear with me. Okay, here's my note. 
Learn genetics and this system does not lie. Now this pedigree was made by selective inbreeding. Okay, I'm gonna start reading now. I only breed for a purpose, and my purpose was to put a dome head on a more pit bull style body. That's why I chose buffalo and rhino. Okay, let's talk genetics. Buffalo was undershot. Rhina was overshot. Now I breed them together, first generation, outcross, now selective breeding. Monster, the look I was going for, had a clean bite, so that is a recessive gene. His only sister, Myla, was overshot. So that is a dominant gene. Okay, let's skip to third generation Apache. She is a repeat breeding. The first breeding was two weeks early, so they passed on. And that first litter, I got a clean mouth male and a clean mouth female. Now that is a recessive gene. And I also got the rest overshot mouth that is a dominant gene. Now in Apache's litter, totally different. This is a repeat, totally different outcome. I had one male with health issues and an exact clone female of Little Buffalo with a cleft lip. So they were both put down. Now Apache's litter all had overshot mouth dominant gene. Now repeats do not come out the same because now there is a different shuffle of the genes than in the first litter. Okay, Apache is still 50% of buffalo and rhino. Now do you get it? <laughs> Percentages and genetics go together. I am the unknown dog man.